Welcome to today's uh, lecture. Today we would like to find out the concept of torque experienced by a current loop placed in a uniform magnetic field. A uniform magnetic field is that with magnitude and direction of the magnetic field in a certain region of space remain same. So imagine a magnetic field set up in a region of space which is uniform. The uniform magnetic field would be represented by a set of straight and parallel magnetic lines of force. So the red lines represent magnetic lines of force that is the uniform magnetic field B. And we have placed a current carrying loop which I initially assume to be of a rectangular shape carrying a steady current I through it. Now this uh, concept would be best understood if we try to first understand what happens if an electric dipole was placed in an electric field which is uniform. So the situation would be like this that this is a positive plate, a negative plate, an electric dipole This is an electric field which is uniform. An electric dipole consists of two equal and opposite charges separated from each other by some distance. So if I have a negative charge separated from a positive charge, there is a force which acts here. There is a force which acts here. And these two forces, they tend to cause a rotation. When we think about rotation, rotational motion, we think about the cause of rotational motion. The cause of rotational motion is always a couple. A couple comprises of two forces which act at two different points on the rigid body and their line of action is different. So if I can demonstrate the concept of torque, we have a situation where we think of this is now a plane, a rigid body. So if there is a force acting to the right and a force acting to the left, there will be a state of equilibrium. So I am pulling this with the help of two forces which are equal and opposite. They cancel out each other. The net force on this is zero. But now if these forces, they change their direction and they start acting in this manner. So this is one of the forces acting in a direction and another force acting in an opposite direction. See, now there will be a kind of rotation which will be caused because these two forces, they are acting at two different points on the rigid body. Their line of action is not same. Here, initially, the line of action was same. So there was equilibrium. So you'll see there will be production of a torque. This concept becomes significant for our today's discussion because we are going to find that there will be a net torque which will be experienced by this current loop placed in the magnetic field and net torque here also means that net force continues to be zero but there is still a rotation which will be produced in the current loop. Now what we uh, further would like to do is that we have the application of Fleming's left hand rule which tells us that what would be direction of force experienced by each of the segments of this loop. Each of the segments is basically a conductor, what would be the force. And you are already, already aware that force experienced by a conductor placed in a magnetic field is given by VIL sin theta, where theta is angle subtended between direction of magnetic field and the current. We sometimes use a current element IL which has the same direction as that of current. Let's apply these two concepts to this situation. So in this case, what happens 
is that when I think of the conductor P, Q, R, S, say we think of conductor P, Q, let's use left hand rule. The left hand rule says that if this is the direction of current, conventional current, first finger gives the direction of field, then thumb gives the thrust. Thrust here means that there will be force acting on PQ inverse. Then there will be a force acting on RS, it will be like this, field, speed or current, and then thrust upwards. So there is a force downwards, there is a force upwards. I was just now showing that if these two forces act at two different points on the rigid body, they are equal in magnitude, opposite a direction, they constitute a couple. And this couple tends to rotate this rigid body. Now let me say that the force on PQ is F1, the force on QR is F2, the force on RS is F3, and the force on SP is F4. So I can write from this equation that F1 would be equal to F1, this F1 force, which will be inverse. I've already shown that Fleming's left hand rule says that it will be inverse, would be B I L sine 90 degree because this conductor is placed perpendicular to the direction of magnetic lines of force. So this becomes equal to B I L. F2, the force acting on QR. Again, when theta here becomes equal to 0 degree or 180 degree, the force acting becomes 0. So this would be equal to B I L sine. Now I am thinking of anti-parallel direction between the two, that is 180 degree, so it is 0. Similarly, F3 would be equal to B I L. If I take the first angle to be 90 degree, let me take this angle as sine of 270 degree, I get minus B I L. Then I have F4 again equal to B I L sine 0 degree, because you can see that here the direction of current and magnetic lines of force or magnetic field is parallel, so this becomes equal to 0. Now what remains is that there are two forces acting on this loop and these two forces are such that they are equal in magnitude BIL, BIL but opposite in direction which means F1 and F3 constitute, constitute a couple and they satisfy the requirement of forming a couple and therefore the result will be now the rotational motion of this loop and this loop tends to rotate and how the sense of rotation this sense of rotation I can draw another diagram now of the same thing and before we go out of this concept let's say that if this was the situation there is a force F here there is a force F here these two forces which are equal and opposite again they tend to rotate the dipole and you must be remembering that the net torque experienced by this dipole is given by P cross E. Please keep this equation in view, in mind, because our final result is going to resemble this equation. For a change of some terms in this, the structure of equation will probably remain same. So we go to now draw the diagram for the situation depicted by current loop in the magnetic field. Uh, this is our previous knowledge, so I rub it off and we have now the concept of this situation is like this now. So if I show that there is a magnetic field, here is the magnetic field and in this magnetic field represented by a set of straight and parallel lines because it's a uniform magnetic field, there is a current loop. I am taking top view, top view, that means I am viewing the current loop, this is the current loop, here is the current loop, I am viewing it from this side, from top. So if this current loop is taken as a certain area, there is a quantity called area vector. Area vector is a vector perpendicular to this current loop, which is normal to this current loop and has a magnitude which is proportional to this area. So in uh, this case, we will be using the uh, idea of area vector also after some time. So this would be the top view of this current loop placed in the magnetic field. So this is top view. Here it is.
you are viewing it from the top. Let the angle between plane of this loop, the plane of the loop and uh, the magnetic field. So this is plane of the loop and magnetic lines of force, either perpendicular or parallel. The angle between plane and the magnetic lines of force, say, is theta. What we have, we have a force acting here, which is force actually acting on the conductor PQ, call it as F1. There is a force acting on the conductor RS here, call it as F3. We have F1 and F3, both equal and opposite. So I'm showing them both equal and opposite. Now you can see that they constitute a torque and this torque tends to rotate the loop in this direction like this. The torque is defined like this. The magnitude of torque is given by one of the forces. One of the forces is either you take magnitude of F1 or you take magnitude of F3. So magnitude of to torque is one of forces multiplied by arm of couple. What is arm of couple? Arm of couple is the perpendicular distance between line of action of the two forces. So there is a force acting here and there is a force acting here. The perpendicular distance between line of action of these two forces. And I try to calculate that perpendicular distance by drawing a triangle. So I have a triangle here. This is a triangle. In this triangle, this angle is theta. This angle is theta. And I have the perpendicular distance between line of action of F1 and F3 equal to this distance. So if I call this point as P, call this point as Q, I call this point as R, you will agree that PQ is the distance between line of action of F1 and F3. This is the two lines of action, F1 and F3. So answer to this now, magnitude of torque becomes one of the forces. You can take either magnitude of F1 or magnitude of F3 because they are both equal and they are both equal in magnitude to BIL multiplied by arm of couple. Arm of couple from this diagram becomes PQ. If I use cos theta here, cos theta in this triangle, in this triangle, cos theta would be equal to base upon hypotenuse. So it is PQ divided by PR, PR, and you will agree that this PR is basically the width of this current loop. Say so this is width. So this is the uh, width of this current loop. This width. And this width I can use as the value for PR. So I have PQ divided by B equal to cos theta or PQ becomes equal to B cos theta. And finally, magnitude of torque would be equal to BIL, BIL into P cos theta. So this becomes length into breadth is area of the loop and this is area A, B, I, A cos theta. Now this equation has in it a value of theta. What is theta? Theta is angle between the plane and the magnetic lines of force. As I said earlier that we will find that more suitable to determine torque would be the direction of area vector. And if I take the direction of area vector and this direction of the loop, there is a change like this, that if these are the magnetic lines of force, here is the current loop, we are taking a top view, and here is the normal to it, normal you understand, is direction of area vector, which is along the normal. This angle, this much of angle, if it is equal to theta, let me call this angle as phi. And you will agree now, phi is the angle between direction of magnetic lines of force, B, that means direction of magnetic field, and area vector. So I can say that if I calculate from here, theta plus phi equal to 90 degree, phi would be equal to 90 degree minus theta. I can make this change here in this expression so that I have the magnitude of torque equal to B, I, A, sine because cos of cos of cos of 90 degree theta I am replacing with 90 minus phi or I can say that <coughs> theta is equal to theta is equal to 90 degree minus phi so 
so I'm replacing theta with 90 degree minus phi, so I get torque magnitude equal to B I A sine of phi. Cos 90 minus theta is phi. Now this is a suitable uh, definition because torque being a vector quantity, I can bring in now cross product of B and A. A is area vector, B is magnetic field vector, I is basically a scalar, current is a scalar. So I write this equation as torque equal to I is current multiplied by A cross B. And this cross product now contains in it value of sine phi because phi is angle between direction of area vector and magnetic field. So this magnetic field and area vector. So that way we have the complete definition for torque given by I into A cross B. Now from here I deduce a very important quantity we call it as the magnetic dipole moment or simply magnetic moment. If you remember the previous equation I stated from electrostatics that torque is equal to P cross E. I go to the magnetostatic for, uh, formula now. I have a definition for torque or the torque experienced by the current loop equal to I A which is now a vector quantity because you are multiplying a scalar to the vector cross B. And I call this quantity as magnetic dipole moment denoted by M and we have finally torque equal to M cross B. A relation which is analogous to this one. Here we had electric dipole moment. Here we have magnetic dipole moment. Yeah, electric field hai, yeah, magnetic field hai. Or ye jo ab equation hai. This equation is going to be of some utility while we go to some devices like a moving coil galvanometer or some other devices of magnetostatics wahan par hum is equation ko utilize kar sakte hain and this equation will now follow the rules of vector algebra for finding out ki torque kis direction mein hoga the direction of torque will be perpendicular to the plane formed by m and b aur yaad rakhe ki m ka jo direction hai wahi hai jo area vector ka direction so whatever is the direction of area vector same is the direction of torque or B, you understand, is the magnetic field.